Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Intel Extreme Masters Oakland PUBG Invitational. As we are about to begin things, matches five through eight today to determine who is going to be our grand champion. Welcome back to the Xfinity Analysis Desk as we are about to go into game number five in a few moments' time. Before we do, though, we have Avenger, we have Steel here, ready to go to theorize where we're going to be going here in game number five. And I'm going to start right out of the gates with a very open question. We do have the potential for change from yesterday's games. These teams went back, they researched what they probably need to do, maybe make some changes there. What are we expecting from these teams going into today? I think all the teams from yesterday were really happy with the initial looting phase, so where they dropped, I think they're really comfortable with, with where they drop. Mm -hmm. They know the patterns, they know the most efficient way to go and get all the good loot and then go from there. I think what we'll see being a difference going into today is the mid-round decisions. So where are they going to take engagements? Where are they going to cozy up when you know the circle's on them? So controlling the engagements a little bit better. Yeah. We saw that all the teams that kind of went into uh, compounds and then they let other people into compounds with them when they needed to leave that compound because the circle they needed to make it into the next safe zone they would fight each other and take each other out of the game that's not really a good fight that you want to take mm -hmm. we saw teams like AAA we saw teams like Digital Chaos they were going really mobile they were taking ridges hills they were going into places where they can control the engagements and then if they are in an unfavorable position they can go and get out of there you don't want to trap yourself in houses and that's what we saw a lot of yesterday especially from like the middle of the pack teams. Yeah. Those are basically the biggest points. I think we're going to see, see the same drops. So we're going to probably expect like Method to go Pachinki. We're going to expect right. TSM to go North George. We're going to expect all these things, FaZe and AAA going to Milta. We're going to see that. Where we see the biggest difference is the mid-round decisions and rotations. Mm -hmm. Every circle we saw yesterday, as soon as we saw a new circle, Everyone hops in a vehicle, yeah. and they all start migrating all at the same time. Everyone's driving. There's not a single person on foot at the same time. It's, right. it's crazy. I think we'll see the biggest difference there. Avenger, your thoughts? I think we're going to see about seven or eight teams doing plane-dependent drops. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be dropping depending on the plane. We only saw one team yesterday doing military. It was uh, Evil Geniuses. Yeah. I think they're going to be contested today as well. Yeah, there was a, there's potentially a lot of room there to be contested. And also, yep. since people maybe see EG as one of the weaker teams here coming into it in terms of their position in the pack, who knows what could happen. As uh, we're almost ready to go over to the commentary team here to start things off. So guys, what are you thinking about day number one, day two? Well, uh, there's so much to be said. Absolutely. But you know, all I know, the, the one thing that really excites me about this is Let's be honest, this is the very first step for one of these teams to really start their legacy. Absolutely. Today we find out who that's going to be, but we have two games to start with, mm -hmm. which is where we're going to be. And I know you've been talking to the players as well. You've been kind of doing your research I here, did. so talk I, me through this. I snuck into the building a little bit early today because I wanted <laughs> to get a chance to talk to the players. So I, I had the pleasure of talking to every single team yeah. for a few minutes and sort of getting their feel. The general consensus is every team went home last night, they sat down, they went over the VODs, they figured out their strategy, and each and every, and I'm not kidding, every team told me, Toppies, we feel prepared and we feel confident. The problem with that, Pansy, is when you have 80 players who feel confident about winning, 76 are gonna be grossly disappointed. Absolutely, only one can win at the end mm -hmm. of the day, of course, that's as simple as it is. That's the beauty of PUBG, right? It's one winner, you know, there's, there's a little bit of shared chicken dinners and squads, yep. but I mean, you know, at the end of the day, there is only one and... Well, speaking I of said, shared chicken dinner, something that I also ahead. wanted to... I saw earlier, I was looking through some stat numbers, and something mm. that really stood out to me is, for instance, Cloud9 is a great example of a team where Chappie, for instance, has l huge overall damage numbers, but only two kills I in terms of like what he's taking away from these games, whereas his partners, tons of kills, less damage. So they're really doing a good job of sharing the labors throughout this match. All right, ladies and gents, it's time to get a little bit excited. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's a little early, but we can get a little rowdy. There we go, southeast start to north. West, that keeps a lot available here. You're gonna see teams happy with this. All their routes are in play. So let's see what they go for, because there's been talk of assassins coming out. Teams eyeing up exactly where others go for. I'm gonna go over to you, Toffee, here. Keep an eye on this. So talk me through what we need to be looking here Absolutely. on the prompter if we get a second so to go to that. I'll throw some marks up on the map so we can sort of look at what potential hotspots are gonna be. There's a couple of spots where we expect to see multiple teams. Teams like Ghost Gaming, for instance, is a, game, a team that tells us specifically we choose our drop based on the plane. So expect them to maybe play almost spoiler. When you talk about FaZe, FaZe always drops in the same place at Milta, but Ghost could potentially choose to spoil that. They're not going to in this game. We already see that the FaZe AA is going to be a pretty consistent lineup. 
Yeah, as you can see, it looks relatively normal so far. I haven't seen anyone going to anything too crazy. I think we've got a bit of Novo play coming out mm -hmm. from Game, which is nice. I, I'm glad to see Novo getting a little bit of love out here. Um, but you're seeing the Noble start towards mm -hmm. South George. You're seeing TSM, North George. Nothing too surprising in that instance. Is there anything else standing out to you here that might be a little different? Because we're seeing Yaz play coming in, which we didn't see too much of, I guess, in the first couple of rounds. Yeah. A couple of teams being forced there, but not their instant choices. Yeah, Miami Flamingos is traditionally a Yas team. They go in, they hit that west side, and they just loot it because they know it's safe and it's uncontested. DC DC, however, is very close to them. If they try to push in, it could prove to be a fight. What I'm most interested in is sort of in that school area. We could see a throwdown between Ninjas and Pajamas, Alliance, Liquid, and Wind and Rain, who are all sharing the same f two squares. Yeah, it's very much like Paper Wolves. And mm -hmm. let's look at the first circle just clipped in. All right, we've got a Northwest play, essentially mm -hmm. meaning that a lot of the favored teams right now, your Phase, your AAA, all have quite a long route to go. If you look at your Liquids and such, they're kind of mansion side, mm -hmm. shelter side, not too much to go for. But EG, GG, that's a long way to move. I'm a little bit worried about this situation that FaZe has to put themselves yeah. through. This is what happened in the last one. If you remember the game yesterday, FaZe had a similar transition to the bottom of the map where they had to make something very similar through a lot of different teams that ultimately cost them big time. So this is going to be a big challenge for them. They were able to fight back from a tough first game to get into a tie for fifth position. That said, this is the worst case scenario in terms of circles for them to have to fight through so many strong teams. And there's not a ways to go around through there. You got to go past Lumber Camp. You got to deal with the mansion fields. And then you got to deal with the school drop down. I'm sure what I actually like about this. We're seeing kind of NIP doing mm -hmm. what they do. Again, this is the kind of paper wall theory. There's so many teams close to them. You've got to be very careful not to overstep. But a team that I like the way they're playing, um, quite similar to something you see, at least a lot of the teams who kind of play through the qualifier, they do the react plane dependent routes, right? They yep. so go to extremities. And what that means is, let's say you have that southeast to northwest, they'll go out to the furthest north, northeast, or, you know, so mm -hmm. around those markets, and it's DC. Yep. I like the way they're doing that. Now, Komeshki is new. That was kind of a, a recent addition, right? That's something that we didn't have too much of before. That was very vacant for loot. It was Stalba, pretty much. Now, with that addition, it does give you a decent start, and I like the 2-2 split they've gone for here up in the northeast Absolutely. as well. It's a, it's a very clean 2-2 split, and what'll happen is they get to move across the map very carefully, very safely, and into the circle at a point where no one's going to be around to exactly. challenge them. So it's going to be a very nice position for them to sort of move into, get loot all along the way, and really maximize their ability to win this thing. Because even Stalva got the upgrades. They've got a little bit of touch of military up there. You've got a lot of vision as well. No one else would have come out that way. So for them, this is nice. Their rotation route is beautiful as well. So keep your eyes in the back of your mind about that. Those guys are still sitting within the top five as well. I do want to point something else out that we saw. We've seen yesterday, EG had Military Island all to themselves all the time. Yeah. I think a lot of teams watched that last night and said, maybe that's not the best chance. Maybe A, we can challenge them for military, and maybe B, we can do something like set a trap for them when they come off of military. So EG is going to have a hard time dealing with both Ghost Gaming and Corn Shuckers, who could play spoilers to EG's attempt to get into this circle. And I know the crowd want to see Corn Shuckers do well. I'm seeing signs coming out. I'm seeing a fan base building. I, I like seeing that. I like seeing the teams getting behind. There you go. I just like playing to the North American audience. You know what I mean? That's, that's all I've got to do. Well, and Corn Shuckers is someone we haven't, we talked about a little bit, but they are a team. They're unsigned. They're hungry for a win. They Absolutely. need to come out of IEM and show just how powerful they are. And they're sitting in fifth. I mean, congratulations to them, but I need to see, I want to see more. And uh, now the the story for me with Cloud9 is that they dabbled with a bit of Chinky. They, they normally go there on the online games. <laughs> but they've been kind of bullied out of their method to control of it. So I'm wondering if Cloud9 are keeping that in mind, if they're going to even go near that or if they're going to avoid it, kind of go further south. But again, that's a very heavy rotation route. You've got to keep in mind where the plane goes, where you see people jump out to and where they're going to go through. So them going south early, I like the way they've gone early, but Gak is going to be busy. That northern side has a good few compounds. Zaki's completely untouched. There's a lot to go to in the north, taking that south side or through Roshok. That is going to be Murder City. Absolutely. And the thing about when you talk about C9 and so these rotations, West Coast is known for a place for Tempo Storm, Corn Shuckers. These guys like to do spread loot. Luminosity is there as well. These are also guys who are known for their ability to pick you out of a car. So Chappie, for instance, is making a really tough rotation, but he could run into trouble. If Valiate stops his car at any point and turns back around, he gets a clear shot at Chappie and his partner who's sitting on a bike wide out in the open. Yeah, as you know, bikes are the harder, one of the harder things to pick somebody out of when it can hit that max speed. That's why a lot of players like to use it. Mm -hmm. But it's also one of those that you don't have any chance of getting a lucky plink on the Jeep. If they hit you, they're hitting you. So it's a it's a tough place for Chappie to find himself. But so far, so good. Now, I'm wondering if we'll see a scrap between Noble and TSM at any point as well. They're kind of always very... Keep it locked down. All right, there we go. <laughs> You know, it's not boots on the ground, it's wheels on the ground in this one. But they are going to be working their way up. Luminosity, obviously, as well, working their way through. And we can see a big 
kind of, I, I guess, transition up here yeah. through the bridges as well. You're going to see a couple of shots coming through. I think that's on Chipsy as well. Yeah. Not too sure. Scoom's around there. You've got Noble around there. There's going to be a big crunch on those bridges. Whenever you see this sort of circle defined by it, that's going to be a big point. And yeah, Sixy's actually found Borg yeah. early on. Now, NIP certainly not afraid of a fight to keep eyes on that, but a couple... Did he just take flight? Maluki has got a nice sight here on Chappie, who's going to jump off to try and get some heals up, but already gets a tag on Solid, and they've got to just try to get out of here, because this is just not a great place to be. The hold that Maluke yeah. has is incredibly strong. There's not a lot of ways to get around here it. Here we go. Yeah, another couple of victims possibly passing. The spray comes out. He's trying. Actually, not even spraying, just tapping away, taking his time on it. So, let's get at least one connection there, but it does seem as though LG have just about made it away from the comfortable range. Again, you don't be wasting bullets either. Not too sure on how much they've got really in stock here, but you're seeing people still running around with the Uzi and such, so again, keep that in mind. But the crunch is happening, the cross is coming through one man down thus far, but Absolutely. beyond that, nothing much to it's report. Just, it's a really tough choke point. Everybody wanted to rush oh, to TSM it because are getting to a fight as well, I think, with Penta possibly here. Oh, absolutely. Oh, no, and Smack's gone down early on. Noble have managed to find a couple of early kills. We've said with these guys as well, Noble, they're not afraid to fight. They generally take the south side of George, but with a circle like this, you're enticed to go north. Absolutely, and, and you want to go north early. You saw a lot of these teams move sooner than you're used to. That's because of the nature of the choke points. There's a couple of choke points areas that are able to cross, but that is it. And at that time, you're going to see teams in each one of those spots locking it down so they can get free kills. Ten points per kill means use a choke point. Now, I'm looking for Liquid yet. Yeah, they are in a really nice compound here, and they were there quite early, tapping away. We're going to see a couple of bullets come through. It does seem the Ducks in a little bit of trouble. Only with the Hollow, you're kind of wanting a four or an eight for that, but you can still do damage. Scoom can be working the way around. Now, for a man who's quite... The Cerebral player, he brings a lot of firepower. People Absolutely. underestimate Skoom a lot. You look at his online performances, they've been very, very impressive. You may want a 4 or 8, but Skoom, he's happy with a hollow at this point because that's just how good he is at hitting oh, yeah, shots. He's fine. He can go 200 plus meters with a red dot or a hollow and get those shots regularly. And let's bear in mind, if you're still new to this, mm -hmm. keep in mind when the grass stops rendering, mm -hmm. that's around the 200 meter yes, marker. So you can kind of work out if you do want to look at zeroing or kind of mm -hmm. bullet drop and that, that's it. You can see Skoom's fine with that. He's going to be comfortable. It kind of becomes second nature. Yeah. But speaking about that now, the blue is going to start moving in, forcing these teams to make up their minds. You want early co compounds, you want to get central. It looks like Luminosity have done exactly that. Liquid have managed it, rode in a couple of others, and we're going to be seeing shots coming through from Tempo Storm, obviously sitting well in the rankings themselves, a little further out, but certainly out, still able to do a lot of work here. Absolutely, and so we're going to see teams start to sort of infest this north side. The north side is strong with rocks, beaches, and hold points. The first there get to really last a long time in this game. We'll see some people clinging to that north George for a while, sort of holding down that area as TSM is right now. But let's jump over to Tempo Storm, where it looks like Maluki and his team are setting up shop to go for the long haul. This is a great spot. It's near the bridge. It gives them a good lockdown, and they can hold there. When you see those bikes smoking, it I just know. gives you it, it, the panic begins. Like, please, just, just get well, me that to my just destination. Shows you how dangerous the bridge oh, wait, look at this right in the open. Liquid could have been oh. in trouble, then quickly enough, though, they do get back into the car and they try and make it away. Hollywood taking his time. Uh, getting out of there, but not much cover to run to, but that UMP isn't exactly doing a massive amount of damage at this sort of range, but it does keep the ground for Ronan. Absolutely, and they're not going to find him. He was he was silenced, so doesn't give away too much in terms of position right now. I do want to call our attention up here to the top, nor the north of the map. We've got something interesting going on. As FaZe is trying to make their way around, they're actually taking fire from Crimson. I believe DC is transitioning out of that area as they well. They just moved away. So this is the story of FaZe's game, though. Every time they try to make crosses that work for them, and everywhere that they try to go, or attempt to go, they get absolutely dominated by teams who just happen to be in the same spot. In fact, uh, Noble was talking earlier today about how they have the same problems. They keep running into these transitional teams and they just need a minute to get to breathe. Now look at the way they've positioned as well for the vast majority of the teams. They've mostly gone north side of the river. Mm -hmm. Mostly putting all the eggs in that sort of basket. Looking to the south, there's no one in Gatka anymore. There's no one by the hill, no one south. George, everyone's kind of going, if it's north, we want to get these early compounds that are so, so good. Get yourself dug in deep. Now Pentra is still working their way up air as well. So still, teams in transition does give opportunity for this sort of moment. But again, Absolutely. damaging cars might just be the main name of the game. You're probably not going to be landing too many shots here, if I'm honest, either towards no. players. People are keeping their distances from these compounds. They know they're going to be occupied the by The reason for point. it is, if we look at the map real quick and just recall where the plane went, that means everybody wants to be on the north side because they know a lot of teams are transitioning from the south here. So if you can get to the north first, you don't get caught in what is going to become a very dangerous southern area. The side point of that is a team like Method can choose to set up camp there. And if they do win the circle, they potentially win the game because they get to have ruins, high castle, places that are entirely defendable. If the next circle doesn't favor them, though, I don't see them going too deep into this turn, this round. No, we'll, we'll see how this one goes on. FaZe have found a little bit of uh, respite up towards the northeast. They're okay. Yes, Nye's not overly populated just yet, even in transition. It looks like AA aren't far away from 
the guys we're watching right now. So again, they're choosing to head north to the Nodalene town, or at least it used to be at this point. We do see a battle coming down between Penta and Alliance, so Sigsy's still in a bit of trouble here getting tagged up. That's going to be a bit of fun if that does actually come through. Penta are not in the safety either. They're still playing against the blue. Now, it doesn't do too much damage at this point, but you don't want to be fighting with the blue on your back, and it does seem as though Sigsy gets taken down, so there's a moment for them to maybe readjust here, get themselves into a safer spot, and it looks like that's exactly what they're doing. That's a big knock. Taking out Sigsy is a big win. Remember, Sigsy was the guy who was getting five kills plus in games Absolutely. yesterday, carrying his team deeper into this turn. So to be able to take him out as Penta is a huge win for them, even if he gets picked back up. It, it's a confidence builder to know you killed Sigsy. Yeah. Great for him as well to be having that level three helmet. Gives him some sustain here, but Mini French Jr., the best name in the game right now, at least. Uh, trying to work around the shooting range. The terrain in this area is beautiful to work with. Lots of death lasers to kind of tuck yourself between. You don't need that hard co cover ne necessarily. Next circle's gonna be coming up right about now. Here we go, going further towards the northwest side. So that's gonna force teams, well, there's not that many outside of this right now, because as said, lots of them went north side of river. Mini French Jr. keeping tabs on this. He knows his players back there, but these guys are in hard cover. They don't need to to really move out, maybe hoping someone else joins in and helps him on this uh, quest to take down the opponents. It's going to be a very tough spot. Mini Fridge with some really great shots here. The smoke is helping a little bit for Crimson to survive. Mini Fridge is going to back off, and they're also dealing with shots from Ronin as well. A lot of players in this area. Ronin with a very good vision, using that M16 burst spray very effectively to try and cover down and take out those cars as they pass. Absolutely. And keeping eyes across the map elsewhere while we watch these guys try and battle this out, just to give you guys updates, DC are still in a phenomenal position. Their rotate times and positions were great. They're going to be the ones to pretty either take on a few teams trying to get to them, but Zaki is completely unoccupied. Absolutely. Now keep in mind that TSM landed around this area. They know that no one went further north than oh, them. Oh no! Oh no, the Kraken driving! The spin out. That is not good. Kraken's going to be spraying down. He's Goes for the reload on this. I'm not sure if that was the right choice, but he's still going to try to set this one on fire. The player's going to be in trouble here. Brophy has to be so careful. There could be players anywhere near him at this point. He's using the car for cover, trying to run down with it. Smart choice, but there's not much cover nearby. And Brophy knows that he's sweating oh, no. bullets. There's fire coming in. He needs to get to cover. Two more bullets would do it. But he makes it to the tree. Takes a second to breathe, and he's still alive. That's an example of the difference between a pro and a pub. He kept his head about him. He followed the car in no matter what happened and made sure he used it to get to cover. Will it get out of cover? Hard to say. Yeah. He's Definitely pinned down between a rock and a hard place. Whoa, but Chipsy. He There's should be there. Look who's just behind that tree. Hey, hey, oh. hey. How has Shiv got here? He's in such a good spot, but got to play it carefully. Chipsy, it, it feels like they've got like that sense about them. There might yep. be someone close, but if you're on your own as well, if you're Shiv, you don't be making these moves either. AAA and Luminosity are very different styles of gaming. AAA snuck in here. They like to go low and slow. They like to have the advantage in the fight. Luminosity, if they get caught, will find themselves in some serious trouble. And it does look like Profi ultimately did lose the fight to Ronin without a developer. Yeah, you can see it was very hard for him to rotate out of that spot or traverse anywhere else. Um, right now we're seeing a couple of the Cloud9 guys getting found, which is pretty bad news for them. They were kind of stuck in that position. They needed good kills, good game to kind of push themselves out of that kind of top eight position, maybe into a top four spot. Yeah. Now we're still seeing DC in a good spot here if they can keep this one going. It does seem as though they're using that compound really well. Fausto's going to find uh, that Coco. So again, they're in a really prime position. We saw a couple of the teams who are qualifiers claiming that spot and doing wonders with it. Hard to kind of get away from, but right now it does seem as though Cloud9 trying to keep this one together. A couple of knocks came through. Chappie's still crawling away, but solid FPS on the defensive duty, trying to keep in touch every area that a threat could come from. Solid's trying to find the threat. You notice he's not going for the fast reses. He's trying to play protection. And on the same side of the token, we've got Ronin, Penta, FaZe also fighting on the opposite side of the map. This is a huge throwdown. The real winners of all of this is TSM and Corn Shuckers because they're hiding out in Georgia Pole and Georgia Pole North, allowing every other team to just sort of eliminate each other right now. Yeah, they don't need to take much more than that. FaZe, though, looking for an opportunity here. Good cover still with them. Clearly eyeing up someone. I think it is still kind of Penta, Ronin. There's a couple of teams very nearby. So they're, they're all in the safety zone, though, so there's not a huge threat on either of them having to right. move until that next circle comes Remember, through. When you talk about traditional FPS, it's common if, in first-person shooters to see sort of the hard peaks constantly. You want to get that kill. In PUBG, it's different, right? Because reses are possible. That's a nice shot. Let's go to AAA where Monkey's got Miracu just stuck behind a tree. Generally, knocks are something that, you know, aren't the best deal before this circle comes in. They get picked back up. Maybe you cost them a helmet, but is it worth the time and the investment? Oh, that is the question. I do like the way the Cloud9 are approaching mm -hmm. their, their hold there as well. You can see the spread of players. Monkey's as well being a bit of a gatekeeper here. Keeping tabs on, nice position. Jiggle peek in the corner, not allowing any clear shots to come through, but Cloud9 still in trouble. Solid FPS, knocked out again. These guys are in a little bit of a problematic situation. Not clear rotation routes, nowhere to run. A lot of eyes towards them, and Hunter, 
little, not far off either. He's got trouble as well. A little though. bit of a problem. The world's burning down around these poor guys as they're trying to find their way off the top of this hill. The only saving grace they have is teams like Crimson are taking shots at Flamingos and Hunter Rounds is being forced to hide. So basically Cloud9 gets knocked, they get a chance to res while everyone else has to hide and fight each other off. So it's kind of a chaotic situation which makes it hard to plan your next move. Absolutely, and yeah, threats all around for Cloud9. It looks like they are falling to pieces here. Up top, MF still laying down some fire, keeping them on their toes, but there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. The shots are coming through. They're going to try and make a dash for it using the cover they have, but you can see how low the HP is here for Frex. That's down to almost a one-shot sort of capability with certain guns, especially with like a Car 98, a mini sort of deal. So Chappie leading the way, but as said, nowhere safe at this point. There's still 74 players alive, though. Absolutely, and the goal right here is to try not to put yourself at too much exposure. That's why Cloud9 is having so much trouble. They can't find a spot just to call home until the circle closes. Once the circle clips in, you'll see every single one of these teams saddle up and roll out. So that's what they need to do is survive for another 25 seconds until it's time for position. Now look at Method. Uh, you're seeing them very southeast of the screen, like kind of going past school side. They're playing this very late, and I actually yep. quite like the late play to a degree. If you're having to go past these bridges, we know they've been hot zones. It's a smart plan for them. It does mean they take that blue damage, and there is a chance someone could be camping it, but again, they've they pick their poison here, yeah. and we still see those fights going on, these long extended fights. Now, you know, the problem is that fights that take this long can blunt any sword, no matter how sharp Absolutely. it can be. So you take these fights, you lose out on everything, you lose out on your, your ammo, your health packs, your, your let's yep. look at it, you could lose out on a helmet, and you need this late game. So they're being very careful, you have to be very resourceful and smart in the way you use what you have. Absolutely. So, and that's, the problem is they're going to have to wait to the circle, get inside. They're masters of running the blue, and they know how to run that perfectly. Now, will they go, actually, I'm wondering oh, yeah. if Method have to go past the Lions here, who are playing very much on the outskirts. Mm -hmm. Now, they probably won't, because what they know is that if they get close to the blue, and they stay close to where the line is on the white, they don't take tons of damage because mm -hmm. of the new nature of the blue. And what will happen when the new mark comes out is a team like Alliance is going to book it to white and yep. give them the time to make the transition. Look at DC's rotations. These guys are so spot on in the way they're moving here. Again, compound to compound quite quick. They've seemingly taken a lot of fights. They could go Zaki. There's a small compound in front of them they can just swing into as well. Exactly the same, and I really like this. These guys are on the ball, they know what they're doing. It looks like Pendra as well now, having to watch everyone go past. A lot of teams around them, they've got to be very careful. But most teams, again, don't want to stop off and take a fight against the blue either, so keep eyes on who's in good positions now. They're the ones receiving the mass of this. East side of the map is going to be absolutely lighting up here. Absolutely. we got a lot of teams trying to force their way in. Liquid's in a good spot, theoretically, but uphill, they're going to have a lot of teams pushing into them. Right now, Flamingos and C9 are about to have a very tall order, as you see FaZe, AA, Ronin, all of them moving towards them very, very quickly, and it's going to get a really hectic. And I hate to keep saying this, but DC, you've got you and they're going scouting yep. towards the compound, see if it's clear. DC pulling up towards a zone that was completely fine anyway, but Penta now in trouble. You can see caught in the heels there. Jeems does go down, but again, AAA taking names. Every single player around them is suffering at the moment. These guys love a good fight. You're seeing that come through with them. Method just making it into the new circle, and we're going to see AAA now. These guys love this. They're looking for opportunities. They want kills. They want to get into this game, and they want that first win. They do, and you're going to notice they're coming in without people knowing where they are. And even in that situation, Trafelli's looking the wrong way. This is what what AA does best. They sneak in from behind and they get you when you don't see them. They're the rattlesnake that you just can't stop. Again, everyone now moving around. We're going to see FaZe looking like they want to work towards DC as well. You've got Wind and Rain taking a lot of fights here on the outside. Penta still locked out, CE locked out, and LG. There's a lot of players who will have the blue on their back pretty soon, and the guys in their way are going to be the biggest thorn in their side. Simsy now looking for other opportunities, yep. using the terrain well. Tony eyeing up what he can. Nice little four times there, just coupled on the mini, but no armor. He's been taking a lot of fights. Again, he's pretty weak at this point. Look for some of these teams. A lot of them are going to see this fight going on and try to get around it. The idea is not to fight into where you hear the gunfire, but to get around. FaZe with They're some great it. knockouts. FaZe playing very strong, but they're forced to because they caught them, found themselves in a tough spot. They pushed into DC, and DC is giving them, they're, they're giving DC some serious trouble. Yeah, DC, I, they used the scouting method. They didn't go as a collective towards a compound, and now it's only Fausto alive. Yep. They tried to play this smart, and they got caught in the heels a little too slow, maybe, but still, there's one man standing, and maybe he can make something happen, but he is the solo member. He does He's all threed up, though. Great gear, but look again. That east side is still in so much trouble. Yep. Noble fighting out of the water towards a couple of teams as well. TSM still sitting pretty. Absolutely. FaZe, one of the best pushing teams in the world, and they just showed us why as they took DC out of a compound. The problem, they're licking their wounds, and guys like Chappie are going to take that chance to pick them off if they're not careful. Yeah, first real challenger for TSM now coming in is going to be Tempo Storm. No need to fight just yet, but you can see AMPR there keeping tabs on what's going on, being smart about this, having a good approach, good mentality.
APR's that kind of player. Oh, Matt's jump over to Simzy. Coming in hard. This is what Penta's known for. He's great at breaches and he's a very aggressive player. Gonna go right into the shack. Grenades aplenty. Wipes out a team. Very clean play by Simzy. And he's gonna be sort of the saving grace for Penta in this match as he opens up a spot for them in the circle. They are being scrappy as hell, Penta. Mm -hmm. They knew they had to come in today they doing did. a lot of work and they've done just that. Looks like Gypsy's uh, actually taking down his teammate with a vehicle explosion. Hmm. Kind of curious what's happened there, but I'm sure we'll find out. Penta again, still staying alive at this point. AA have a couple of members that are still up, still doing damage. They're just taking their time on this, just on the very verge. So they don't need to go too far. They can just be a pain to anyone else. Absolutely. Alliance pushing through a kill box right now. LG gonna light up his method, also trying to get by. JP2 with a good spot, easy cover, great broken wall, and he can sort of just see the entire map from where he is. Phase on stopping either. You can see them taking down Leighton and actually putting him down as well. That's another team actually killing him. A nice work from Chappie towards Alliance. Is there gonna be anyone else? Oh my god, they're actually for the peak. That's insanity. Chappie now prone down to nice line of sight. Goes back in for more, but he can't get it done. Sigsy loves a good fight and he's gonna find that so easy. Absolutely. Now his teammates are around him. He might look for a revive. There's any chance they're risen. They're down, they're done. Now more four. Oh, is that nade coming through? That's exceptional work. So many kills coming in. 53 alive now. Monkey's doing damage. He's just being the assassin wherever he can. Being a nuisance, being a pain. Mm -hmm. But right now that kill feed is filling up. And we're going to see a bit of an eastern lean now in the next circle. Yeah, Monkey all over the place. Back to the chappy very briefly. He's a great fighter. He'll always take him one-on-one. -on -one, but Alliance lives up to their name. They always collapse. They always play together. And they always make sure that no one's left alone. And you saw that that was their advantage over that chappy fight. Back to Jeems with some really good vision here. He's playing the blue very effectively as he makes his rotation. NIP are their biggest threat for now, unless someone turns around to fight mm -hmm. them. Um, NIP actually do have some hard cover to play with, so again, curious to see how that one works out for them. Ollie with they're going to lay down some shots. First bit of action we're really seeing forced out of them as well. At the moment, you've got to say Liquid are in a phenomenal position. They have some really nice cover on this one. But oh, look at TSM, look at Noble. They're about to have a big fight on this one. Penta out in the open, playing the soft cover well, moving as a collective, but MPR knows what's going on. Shots already coming through. He's got the scar. He's well geared. He's not in a bad spot. He doesn't have far to go. He needs to make sure the rest of his team, though, are in the right position as well. Can he back out of this building without being seen? Can he make it harder work for Noble, who's still at four alive? Absolutely. TSM and Noble have been coming up against each other one game after another. They both like that working the edge. They both like to push in from an unexpected side, and that is where they keep running into each other over and over and over again. Liquid in a good spot in the middle of the circle. Penta holding Gatekeeper, keeping Simsy and Ninjas in pajamas out. So there's an awful a lot of different fights sort of breaking out around the map as gatekeeping seems to be the name of the game right now. Absolutely, and it's nice seeing Hollywood having a good performance. He's, you know, he's one of the old school players. Good to see him uh, turning up, but at the moment, Tempo Storm looking to make it hurt, and it is going to be Hollywood on the uh, receiving end yep. of that one. So Tempo Storm suddenly doing damage still. Not going to relent on that aspect. 48 players still remaining. We're going to see the crunch now coming in. Slow side on the east side, and Sam Teeth now eyeing up the next move. Bandaging up. Yep. Damaged up on, on the arm of the helmet. It's not the best position, but now NIP making their move. They have the problem from Penta, who took the initiative and moved first. Putting the smokes down, they now need to make their move and make it count. A couple of lines of sight, they have to be careful. Hence the prone here. They don't want to be seen on this area that's so open. It's very open. So you see these late pushes by the teams just staying out of the blue. Ninja's pajamas suffering because of that. Luminosity might actually benefit by sneaking in after the fight, but here comes Jeems, throws up a nice nade to try and make the push happen. Wants to push up on X. X didn't see the grenade coming. He's got to be very careful here. Jeems a great shot, a good sniper, and a better oh, creature. He's, he's flanking on the blue mm -hmm. side. This is so aggressive. This is incredible stuff from him. He's going in solo. Two players in front. He's not sure if they're still on the blue side, but he needs to back away. He needs to be cautious. He was going down a bit of a limb. You know they want to be aggressive, but maybe you've got to kind of keep it in check. The rest of the NIP side have a nice death late. They're in the safe now, so they don't need to overextend. Absolutely. They're going to get into a little bit of a standoff here until we know where the last circle is, but all these teams are going to have to go low and slow. Liquid comes Liquid out with the best again. circle, being blessed by player unknown, given that spot. <laughs> Everyone else now has to come to them. And honestly, the last person I want to push into in that building is Skoom. Yeah, let's. It, Skoom's just a boss. Now, TSM and Noble might get a fight here. It looks like they both kind of want to traverse the same sort of ground. And yeah, the fight's beginning between those two. You're still seeing NIP in a bit of a problem. As Penta are being quite aggressive about this. They're actually chasing towards them. You can yep. see two players there making a move. TSM still have the kind of deeper ground to yeah. work with at this point. But again, if you pick up an over and someone's got maybe an eight or a four just locked on that, you're going to be in trouble. But Froz going to be sent packing a little bit keeping themselves humble. They can't overextend, even if they yep. feel confident. But look at these players. They're going in on this one. Penta knows they need kills to win, and Since that's what they're going to do. he's going for this, this is sick. He's got the 4-1 as well. He can spray that down. Four times maybe not ideal, but I'm sure he can make it work. <laughs> Trying to check the ground. He wants to take the high ground on Sweater, and Sweater will be sweating bullets here. He knows he's in trouble. Bad timing on the revive. This could be an execution. Simsy, he sees it. He sprays it, and the job is done. NIP suffering.
at the hands of Penta. Oh! But oh, there's a response! You don't get away for free at this point. Everyone knows where everyone is. Noble now moving up towards the east. TSM chasing them up. Penta now needs to work their way in. Luminosity up in trouble with FaZe. Everything is now happening on the outskirts here. Absolutely. This final circle is almost impossible to push into. We're going to have a lot of people hiding in small defilades, little cover areas. Down to the south, Noble and TSM are still completely at war. They only have one spot they can push into. Whoever gets there first owns this circle or the bottom of this circle. And Noble have the high ground. And look at this just on that other verge. I don't think they know this. Surely not break a about to appear over the man, the king of spray. We know that. Boom's now actually in trouble. It looks like they're being fought on other fronts, and yet Break spun him out, lives up to the name. Sprays like a god, takes down Adaculus, but there's more there. Does he expect them so close? Will they go aggressive to try and avenge their fallen teammate? And he waits so patiently. Here's the there's, there's the, the moment. Peak. Wait, no. Oh, the patience is incredible, but oh, maybe he waited too long. Break now knows what's going on. He's surely got an idea. And the spray is perfect again from Break. This man can't be stopped. still need to move. There's still players in their way. Beautiful plays by TSM. They hit that death lane. They breached the hill. They had to breach beautifully Penta. well. And now they're running into the other guys, the guys who need kills, the hunters in the circle. That's Penta right over the circle, looking at them. Frost? Penta Frost could be the first one to see this. He looks away. It's open. good cost him. Ultra just saved his no. life. This goes down. So again, Frost gets to live for another second. He's using that lower ground to try and deny the line of sight. Is break aware? Can this but be recovered? It doesn't look like it. We're seeing other teams now coming out as well, keeping hold of things. Face time to struggle down to 26 here. Everything's coming through. Penta have found a couple of kills towards TSM. I'm not sure who's alive now, but Break's still there. He's managed to take out Simzy. This did end up dying, and Break is still doing the damage. He is not Ooh. done just yet. So again, Sad. trying their damn best here to hold on. He tried his best. Ultimately, he didn't even go down to the fight with Penta. He was taken out by Samti at TS, just up to the north, and that's the trouble with these fights. So that one coming away, very strangely. But what I did see is a lot of these teams like Crimson and Flamingos and Penta, who are desperate to get points in this game, are doing that. Miami Flamingos has three alive right now. That south side just got wiped as well. Everything's clear on the south mm -hmm. side because everyone wants to play slow side. Oh, no. Open up the map and look at these guys just converging towards slow side of circle. This is pressure moments here. Both teams we've got. Who do we have moving in? MF Liquid. Tempo Storm. Tempo Storm. Miami Flamingos. They're all moving in south side and the crossfire starts to begin. You can see the shots now coming through on the minimap. Everyone's looking for this one. The teams in the north, sure, they've got the blue to be worried about, but right now it's running time. Mm -hmm. It's time to get in there and go. You'll see a team like Scoom. Ghost Gaming on the north wait for the last second, but Scoom is going to put the work on Flamingos. Flamingos had to move. They had no choice. They walk into the Scoom box and he takes him down. He does need to be careful. He's making a lot of attention look towards him so he knows that. You can see him looking around in the periphery. Who's there? Who's watching me? Another Scoom. player. Oh, Scoom! One more bullet is all he has to land. He, he doesn't well. need 100 rounds. He just needs 10 and he takes him down. Flamingos done. Scoom is putting on a real class for us today. 12 Alive, they are fighting tooth and nail to try and make their legacy start right here, right now. They want to make this one begin. Mole Man still up as well. They're going to play this circle as late as they can. Absolutely. That's the name of the game for them. We've got the crunch coming in from the northwest side as well. AA still have players up. You've got Tempo still still up in this, but Scoom's found another victim. But only the car's going to save the other players. He still wants to do more. Nice. Scoom is racking up kills. He's getting points for his team. He is doing damage. 10 Alive now. Not even the Blues allowed to take a kill away from Scoom as far as he's This guy is a madman. He is not stopping at all. It looks like he's been finally taken out by the play zone. Yeah. Is the only thing that could stop him right now. There's still hope alive, though. Who do we have up here? Six players remaining. Absolutely. He was able to get enough kills that it almost makes up for the fact that they may drop down he's a rank He's as well. Oh, he's picked up. So this means they're going to be back into play. But look at T-Bone. Look at this angle he's got here. He, he could, could be, be the, the complete spoiler. detriment. I wonder if Mole Man's going to check on this. It's not something you keep in mind. No. You've got Tempo Storm on the other side. T-Bone could be the thorn in their side. T-Bone waiting for his chance, having a nice cup as he hopes that they'll come around the corner, relaxing in the grass. This is a very smart play. He knows that the reses are going on, and two kills could mean an awful lot to Crimson at this stage of the game. The AK only needs three hits. Oh, Mole Man! Man! What? X-Ray Vision! Sick play from Mole Man. Great intuition. Now they can move up. Now they need to realize who they're up against. Instinct, We've got baby. Tempo Storm up against Liquid. 3v2, the fire comes in. Tempo Storm taking the initiative. Scoom's in trouble. He's down to a one-shot hit, trying to heal up as best he can. And now Mole Man tries to provide cover, but Tempo Storm aren't stopping. They are aggressing well. They've got... Scoom. Oh, Scoom! He doesn't know when he's dead. It's he wants this so bad. 
Your boy and now Dre. he's brought it down so close. Still five alive, revive still possible, but not in the mines here. Scoom looking for the next victim, who will fall? Samdi is playing the long game, he's playing the snake. He's gonna just sit in that grass and play the circle. They know this is Dre, Dre's good at pushing. Scoom slides Scoom. to the outside, he wants to try to find it. Scoom takes the shot, gets the head, baby! He goes down, making a 2v1. Samdi in the distance, has vision, but no hope and no cover. He's gotta go snack through the bushes and try to make his way there. He's not even in the new circle and he knows it. He's gotta move into them, but will Scoom realize this? Will Moleman as well? Moleman taking down his team, and it's Scoom! It's Scoom. always been Scoom! Goal, Eight goal. kills! Incredible work from Liquid. They never knew when they were dead, and they played out of their minds today. That's the first step in day two. This is finals day. Day one seems like Ooh. a different game completely. They turned up to play and we are seeing exceptional moments from these guys. Scoom just played his heart out for Eight his team. kills. All I have to say is Scoom, baby. That man killed it and he killed everyone. Unstoppable. Just needed to get picked up and gets right back in the game. They took a huge risk and a couple of those weights for the blue, but it paid off in dividends. Tempo Storm second place, though. Those they guys played, played so very well. well. So, so took well. out a ton of teams and really pushed very, very effectively. And look at this. Crimson and Ghost Gaming both going three and four. Those guys needed it, they knew it, they earned it. What a way to start off day two here at IEM Oakland. This is what it's about. We are being treated to some exceptional moments and it's nowhere near over yet. Keep in mind, this can completely change the overall standings and there's still so many games to go, but that's enough from us. I think we need to head down to the man himself, the man of the moment, Scoom. Indeed, Lauren, Scoom. Oh my word, what a way to clutch up when it matters. Audience, give this man a round of applause. You absolutely nailed it. Before this game, you said to me, interview after this one, yeah. how are you feeling? I'm feeling super good, man. Uh, I, like, like you said, I told you, I, like me and my team, we went back, watched the VODs. We had a good fourth game yesterday. We had a rough patch at the beginning, but we had a good fourth game and I, I was just feeling it. And today I was just like, like I told you, I feel like we're gonna get a win and you're gonna interview me. <laughs> I like it, I like the confidence. Now, I've gotta say, Team Liquid, when we watch you guys play, you're a little bit different to everyone else. You still go for the old school kind of two and two split. Even at the end though, even though you were against six of the people that were on there, it was a two versus three at one point and you guys still clutched up. Why do you guys tend to go for the two and two split rather than sticking as a fall? Um, we don't really tend to do it. It just depends on the situation. If we can find two good spots where we can just get in the circle, we tend to do it. Uh, in, in this specific uh, circle, we, we did it and it actually paid off. I mean, our teammates died, unfortunately, uh, when we did split. But at the end, it was me and Mallman, and we feel really confident, me and Mallman playing together. So it was a 2v3, but we felt good. So. And you guys have actually been together for a while. You won the, uh, the very first DreamHack event together as a pair. You stuck together, you picked up two fantastic teammates. Now, I've been told to me, I believe you are just 35 points behind TSM. You are now jumped up to second place. How are you feeling? Feeling super good. That's exactly the game we needed, and we're going to take it home now. You're going to take it home? Are we getting another win today? I'm pretty sure. We'll All right, it. then, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Liquid. Don't go anywhere, guys. This is going to be a feisty one. These guys have just clutched it up. We're having some fantastic PUBG action on screen for you all day long. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a second.